Yeah. Yeah. I just wanna be on a tour bus, sitting in the back with a cold one. We all got dreams, know you got some. Yeah, we all got dreams, know you got some. I remember sitting in the backseat, tapping my feet to the beat that was blasting. Had this dream and it seemed like a passion. I'ma make it happen, I'ma take action. Yeah, ain't nobody gonna tell me different. Nah, since day one I've been winning. Yeah, focused on myself from the beginning. Didn't hear nobody else's opinions. Yeah, I strapped up young, did my research. Man, I worked so hard till my feet hurt. Man, I worked so hard writing each word. Cause I wanna go far, I'm a dream guy. Yeah. One life, only one life. Yeah. So do it just right, do it just right, yeah Keep your head high, keep your head high, yeah Yo, you gotta keep your head high Don't let it go by, let it go by, yeah Don't you let it go by. Yeah. When everybody thinking that you won't make it Forget them, yeah I am him, I am peak My credentials, I am me Better, better, better Tell me another who Good morning, everybody. I woke up about uh, 20 minutes ago, give or take. I already took a shake with MCT oil. I took my pills. I took a probiotic yogurt. I drank a bottle of water. I was a little bit dehydrated in the middle of the night last night while I was sleeping. Woke up just hungry as hell. So I had a shake with some MCT oil and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at like 1 in the morning, you know. Came in the bathroom, brushed my teeth, meditated five minutes, fell back asleep. Woke up, you know, give or take two and a half hours later, started my day. Now I'm on my day, so let's go ahead and check the weight real quick, and then get to the rest of my things. All right, guys, real quick, just a reminder that your weight can change up to like 10 pounds in a single night, just because of water, salt, carbs, hormonal imbalances, not sleeping sufficiently, you guys get the idea. Just because your weight goes up or down, three, four, five, ten 10 pounds in a day, doesn't mean you gained any fat whatsoever. It's just the intestinal mass and the, the water and all the additional things in your body. It's not a big deal. All right, guys, so real quick, I just finished up my, my normal morning stuff, my reading, my studying, my meditation, my breath work, uh, all that stuff. I'm going to eat right after this, but real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some posing for you, a couple basic poses. It'll allow you to see different areas of my body, as well as how to perform the poses. And this is going to highlight kind of what I look like right now, the level of fat I have on my body. Uh, you get the idea. And then what I'll do is, in, uh, probably every two weeks or maybe every month, I'll do another posing video, and you guys can see how much weight has come off me. It looks like to the day, uh, I've lost, give or take, a little bit hard to say, but give or take 8 to 10 pounds of fat. I started at 219. The end of the first week, I was, um, well, give or take 210, 10 pounds. A couple days later, though... I was down even more to 207, three more pounds. So you gotta remember though, you're still gonna have intestinal mass. You're still gonna have all the things I talk about regularly, the water, the salt, the sodium, however many carbs you consumed the day prior, etc. So I can tell just by physically looking at myself, I don't care about the weight that much. I tell by looking at myself how much of the fat is coming off and how much has yet to come off. Now for me, I stored the vast majority of my fat, my lower belly and my lower back. So those are the areas I'm particularly going to be looking at. Uh, but anyways, if you guys haven't tried posing before, you should. It's really fun. It's quite difficult. Um, <laughs> I don't recommend working out first or getting a pump first. I know a lot of people like to do that. Uh, the issue is if you do do that, it makes the posing a lot harder, actually. Uh, it's also really important to be very hydrated if you're going to be doing posing or else you're just going to cramp up. And then a final thing to mention is when you're doing your posing, focus on quality over quantity. Make sure you got your angles right the like focus on getting everything right don't focus so much on flexing the flexing is one of those things everybody over flexes they'll sit there and instead of just going flex they'll go flex and start like shaking and trembling etc not really a good way to pose should you practice like that sometimes sure just to push your limits but usually just get the poses down first so let's just look at me a couple real basic poses i'll probably just do five or six Maybe seven, but you guys will get the idea. 
Are you gonna win or is the place scared? I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare Got a mic, hey, 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 hey I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare You got one shot, life ain't fair Are you gonna win or is the place scared? I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare Got a mic, hey, Watch out, I'm fighting hard for the crown Yeah, no doubt I'll be the best pound for pound I'm obsessed with winning, this is my house So watch out, I'm coming to the top I vow, yeah, I'm addicted to winning If that's a sin, I'll be sinning I'm disciplined when I'm in it And this is just the beginning The money, yeah, I'll be printing While helping others make millions See, I'm not selfish, no villain But still, I'm making the killing I'm here for greatness You can't lock me into cages Deserve to be on stages I will be the greatest Do it yourself, I made it DIY from the base Man, I'll take my life into my own hands, my own plan Yeah, I got a backbone, designing my own program I'll mentor the next wave of the bravest So don't be late, I'm about to make you changes You got one shot, life ain't fair Are you gonna win or with the place scared? I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be there Got a mic, hey, hey, hey I will not stop, I am prepared to the top, yeah, you must be rare You got one shot, life ain't fair Are you gonna win or is your place scared? I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare Got a mic, hey, hey, hey I will not stop, I am prepared To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare <clears throat> Anyways, that's just a real quick run through of some of the poses I mean, there's a lot more you can do. I'll show you some more as we go. Maybe I'll show you a couple each day's practice, but you get the idea. Definitely not my best. I haven't done any posing in about six months, so uh, <laughs> I'm sure those poses look terrible. I'll see it when I edit. <laughs> hey guys, 7 a.m. I'm at my client Sydney's house and we are setting up her gym. We're getting everything organized so she's gonna have a nice outdoor gym. We're putting a plan down on paper. She's ordered the parts and tomorrow we're gonna come over. We're gonna set the gym up. We're gonna do a workout with her, film everything so she comprehensively understands how to build, set up the gym and use it for every single movement. <laughs> how excited are you about your I new gym? I am like gym? this excited. Okay, I don't believe you, but okay. <laughs> It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be easy. As you already know, your workouts are gonna be very simple, very basic, 10, 15 minutes a day, they're not gonna be hard. You don't need any weights, you don't need a gym, you just need the keychain gym setup I gave you. We're gonna be adding a pull-up bar and a middle attachment screwed in permanently. Not something I usually do, but this is your house, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. Put down some fun flooring, posters and mats, and have a good time. So anyways, let's get to it. All right, guys, real quick break. I'm just going to make something to eat real fast. And I do mean real fast. This is probably just going to be two or three minutes. It's just going to be steak with potatoes and some gravy and probably watermelon or blueberries and a probiotic shake. Eat that real quick and then back to my clients. It's uh, back to back today until noon. So earlier today we were going over the foot triangle, how to jump and land in a stable fashion, how to stand on one leg in a stable fashion. Basically, you know, all parts of your body must be balanced equally. Center of gravity, center of mass, how the foot triangle works, a form foundation, those kinds of things. Uh, just real quick, since we've already been through that, you have kind of a grasp for it. I'm going to be showing you on the board what it looks like when you are standing with a firm foundation, with the weight evenly distributed on both legs, 
evenly put into your feet, what's called the foot triangle we just talked about. And we're going to be discussing essentially how the body functions cohesively and how you can brace against any exterior force, provided you have this kind of basic information. A lot of you guys uh, kind of know this information already. I know you know this information kind of instinctively, but it really helps to have it laid out in a cohesive way like this because you probably never thought about it like this. And then once you actually kind of understand and think about it like this, it transfers over to every aspect of your life. From walking to shopping to how you pick up and carry things, uh, you get the idea of everything. But anyways, let's just talk about it real quick. So, as you know, we've got you. And this is just happy little you. You've got your body standing hopefully nice and straight, and there's nothing wrong with you. Now, if this is the case, your feet are the first thing we're going to be talking about, as we, you already know. So what you have here is your foot, which has three points where you want to distribute the load or equally distribute the force you're putting into your foot when you are standing, jumping, you get the idea. Basically, when you have a foundation and you need to be balanced on one leg for a temporary period of time, for a prolonged period of time, it's very helpful to know that you want your weight evenly distributed throughout this even foot triangle. Now, the easiest way to compare it is just like a footstool. It has three legs. If any one of those legs is too close to the other legs, the stool is likely to tip over in the narrower direction. Kind of makes sense, very obvious. We're gonna build on it later. Long story short, you wanna be distributing the load or your weight or the force evenly into these three points. So basically 30%, 33% of the load into your heel, the little nick where your big toe meets up with your foot, and the little nook where you're or basically the ball of your foot, or the little nook underneath your pinky toe. Now those three together make a fairly even-sided triangle, and it allows you to stand in a controlled manner, evenly distributing the weight throughout there. Now I know most Americans kind of tend to have a habit of standing on one leg or reclining or making life easier. It's not really healthy to do that. It's kind of a bad idea. You want to always be standing in a firm foundation way, braced. Now, you got all that? Pretty simple. We already talked about that. All right. So moving forward, we're going to talk about the second point in your, let's just say, important posterior chain to consider when distributing load. And that's going to be your pelvis. Now, the easiest way to think about your pelvis is like a keystone or an arc in a castle wall. So you know when you got a big, heavy stone castle, hundreds and hundreds of tons of rock, granite, you get the idea. Now, if you want to make an opening in this wall, you're going to have to make it so that the force evenly distributes around the opening to make the opening so the wall doesn't collapse. So a lot of you kind of already know this already, but let's just say at a big castle wall, very heavy, you get the idea, all these stones. And you want to make a hole in it. Well, in order to do that, First things first, you're going to have to make the arch. And the most important aspect of this arch is the keystone. Now the keystone is the point of this arch which allows the rest of the weight to be distributed down and around the hole. So you have all of the weight pressing down from up top. This weight is then being directly pushed into this, the keystone. Now you'll notice this keystone basically looks like your pelvis. Now the reason for this is because they have the same function. It is evenly distributing the weight down and around the wall, back into the wall underneath, so as to create the opening. Now your pelvis, it does exactly the same thing. So this would be the keystone, and then it's going to be distributing the force down and into your legs evenly. Now, of course, the weight is going to be everything above the pelvis. So this is very important to consider. And then the final thing we're going to be discussing in regards to kind of 
bracing center of mass before we put it all together is of course your bracing. So you'll notice here, I have my thoracic cavity, all my ribs, as you know, protects my organs and such. I have my pelvis down here that we just spoke about. But then for all intents and purposes, there's a really big hollow right here. There's no bones, there's no nothing. There's just a spine going down this big hole. So this big hole, sometimes it needs to be made stable, straight, and rigid, very tight, taut. You know this from when we're exercising and I, you're doing bicep curls or triceps or squats, your torso starts leaning, swaying, you feel like you can't get the movement. That's because you're not braced. Now when I say braced, we talked about the soda can already, but the easiest way to consider it is to make your cavity here extremely pressurized like a soda can. Now the reason that soda cans, pretend this is a soda can, now the reason that soda cans are so strong and you can stack pallets and pallets and pallets of weight on top of soda cans is because they are pressurized. The thin aluminum is not strong. And as soon as you open that lid, you release the pressure. That pressure is intra-abdominal pressure when you take a deep breath in and you fully inflate your lungs, what you've just done is pressurize your rib cage so your spine is no longer flexible. It's no longer flexing and moving. Same thing with your rib cage. Now, when you hold this brace, of course your blood pressure is going to go up slightly, but the most important thing, the thing that matters about this rigid brace is it's preventing you from swaying and moving in directions you don't want to. So we'll talk more about bracing at another time, but in terms, again, of center of, center of gravity, center of mass, and understanding your proprioception, how you're trying to accomplish things during these movements that you're not familiar with, it's very helpful to understand where you're coming from before you just start trying to monkey see, monkey do. That's not a very productive way to do things. So let's just say, hypothetically, um, let's use bicep curls as an example. Now, Let's say I'm over here and I'm, I'm doing my bicep curls and I have my feet together. Now, even with only 10 pounds, you guys can see my body swaying back and forth. So why is this the case? Well, this is the case because at the moment, my body is simply up and down. The dumbbells are being swung, which is causing momentum in my body to move back and forth. And this is because for all intents and purposes, my body right now it's just a domino. It's very narrow and it's easy to push over. So if I came up to myself and I just shoved myself while I was standing like this, I'm going to fall over backwards. Or conversely, if I was standing behind myself and I shoved myself, I would fold over forward because my body does fold that way. Now, how can we make this superior and remove the momentum and swaying? Not very simple. You spread your legs and you brace against the exterior force. The exterior force in this case is the swinging back and forth. Now, if I split my legs, take a deep breath, now I'm not gonna move anywhere, no matter how heavy that weight is, there's gonna be no sway. So that's just me literally using my knowledge to brace, remain rigid, and not be moving while I'm doing a bicep curl. And of course this has many, many benefits. You obviously see the reason we'd want to do this, but a reminder, just food for thought, when you are doing your bicep curls, you don't want to get as many as you can with momentum. That is so counterproductive, it's not even funny. What you do want to do is not move anything except the target lever, and you want to take that muscle to near failure. That is productive. Every time you're adding any form of momentum to the equation, for all intents and purposes, you're subtracting load to the target muscle and putting it on other muscles and generally causing wear and tear as well. So, you got it? Makes sense, right? Now, how about laterally? So if I'm standing once again like this and I come along and I push myself, well, I'm gonna fall and I'm gonna fall that way or I don't fall the other way if I push that way. So how would we, once again, overcome this? You're gonna spread your legs very wide, just like you see me do when I'm doing my lat pull or my oblique crunch. Now, the reason for this, again, is I have to be braced in this direction. I must have a firm, wide 
triangle base because the load is attempting to pull me this way. And if I was standing like this, I'm just going to get pulled right towards the origin of that cable. A reminder, the cable is a visual representation of gravity. That's why it's so hard to stand laterally when you have that kind of movement. So is all this making sense? Okay, cool. Now we're going to talk about bracing. Hey guys, just going to make a real quick uh, omelet. I got about, uh, give or take 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to eat this, have another one of my drinks, uh, probably just take a cold shower and then go out and start doing some of my marketing, shopping, business, etc. You get the idea. But anyways, you know how to make an omelet, but here's an omelet again. Hey guys, back at the cow bar, having a good time, just out here relaxing. Nothing much going on today, I'm actually all done with clients, and it's only 4 p.m. So I'm going to be relaxing for maybe two or three hours, then go write up another article, work on my book some more. This is the tenth book I'm working on, if you guys are curious to check out any of my other books, you know, my Etsy store is linked in the description. And uh, I'm probably going to have two, three, maybe four kavas. If you guys haven't tried kava out before, you should. And um, well, long story short, but if you're going to get kava, you should try the kava soda. As the regular kava kind of tastes like mud water, not a big fan. And uh, stay away from the katan, or kratom, as you guys might call it. Uh, not the best thing for you. It has some benefits, but generally speaking, just try to stay away from it. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys are having a good weekend as well. And I'll show you some more fun stuff later. Dopamine is something that to get you have to give In the moment it may suck but that's the only way to win Keep your red and chin up, take the blows and don't give in And life will hit you so hard, we've been through it so far Wake up with a new scar, some just want a new start But we all get a different hand, tell to us a different plan Take your gifts and make a stand, you don't get a second chance I could feel the weight of the world, better brace that Got a little blood in my mouth, I can taste that And I've been beaten bruised from the fight, ain't no fake cow Calluses, they grow from the pain in the days past But I will never give up And I will never give in Strength is all I got now And damn it, man, I'm all